Hi everybody and welcome to this short video where I'm going to show you how to modify a Bresser Messier 152S refractor uh, to work with the Pegasus Astro Focus Cube 2. So here it is, uh, I got a delivery of this uh, this week and uh, it comes in a neat little box, well packaged. And if we just take a look first of all at what comes uh, with the box, so uh, a couple of a um, couple of manuals there. One of them is uh, some short uh, instructions. Uh, this one here is the temperature sensor, which we'll talk about when we get uh, into the focusing. Uh, and then this part of the box here, uh, this is uh, uh, the USB cable that connects to the back of the focus cube. Uh, we have a cigarette lighter, 12 volt adapter now. The end of this is a uh, 2.1 millimeter uh, positive center, uh, 12 volt supply. Uh, I'm not going to use this uh, for my setup. Uh, you, you may want to. And then uh, these are really important too. Uh, this is uh, a set of couplers uh, which uh, connect the motor drive uh, to the spindle on the telescope focuser. We'll take a look at that uh, in a moment too. Uh, the other two things I took out of there, a uh, selection of nuts and bolts uh, to fix the focus cube to the telescope. And uh, these uh, connect the motor uh, focuser cube uh, to the bracket, which I haven't shown you yet. The bracket is in here. There's the bracket. This is the universal bracket. It fits uh, um, quite a range of telescopes. Um, now, the, the uh, Bresser Messier isn't one of those, um, but uh, uh, I think it's. I think it'll fit. Um, so we'll we'll take a look at what we have to do um, to adapt that. And then finally, uh, this is the device itself. Uh, it's very neatly packaged. Weighs just over uh, three hundred grams. And to the the packet, uh, we can see here uh, there's a, a USB uh, connector. That's the other end of that cable there. Uh, the twelve volt uh, DC input, and then an extension port, uh, which the manual says uh, you must only attach either the temperature sensor uh, or the special remote control uh, for it. So that's, um, that's the device out of the box. Um, and uh, in the next part of the video, we'll take a look at the focus, uh, the focus device actually on the breast messi and what we have to do uh, with that. So this is the uh, focuser on the uh, telescope itself. It's a pretty simple uh, rack and pinion uh, focuser. Uh, it's held on uh, to the bottom of the scope by these four uh, M4 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, we're gonna take those off. We won't be needing those actually. Uh, we're gonna have to replace those with some longer uh, bolts. Uh, this one's pretty good. Uh, there's no real backlash uh, in the focuser, but the, uh, the issue with it is it's a heavy focuser. And so when it's on the tripod and you're trying to get good focus, uh, the uh, image bounces around uh, quite a lot. And that's why, uh, that's why I'm looking at this uh, uh, focus cube. Um, so the manufacturer has um, either soldered or glued uh, these in place. Uh, on some telescopes there's a little allen key you can get these off, on this one they're very firmly fixed. Uh, so we're going to have to saw off um, one of these and I'll decide which one uh, in, in, in a moment. Um, the spindle itself is a 7mm um, uh, diameter spindle and uh, we just saw those uh, different couplers that go onto the focus cube. Uh, one of those actually uh, fits the seven, milli, seven millimeter spindle, uh, so we should be good to go. Uh, so the next step will be uh, to uh, actually test that the focus cube I've been delivered works uh, before I start making some uh, irreversible um, changes to this uh, to this telescope. So to test the cube, uh, the first thing uh, you have to do is download all the drivers. The manual uh, tells you how to do this, and once they're installed, they're installed on my uh, Lenovo T61 here. Uh, it's time to test the cube. And so um, there are three sockets on the cube, uh, the USB uh, for connecting to the PC, uh, the um, extension port, and then the power supply uh, in. Uh, so first of all, uh, we'll just plug in the temperature sensor. And I'm gonna do that first because um, if you forget to do that, uh, you then have to wait 30 seconds uh, if, you, if you plug it in. Um, after you've already started setting up the uh, device, which we don't really want to uh, waste time doing. Um, here's the uh, USB. 
And we're gonna plug that into the USB PC socket right here. And there's just one final one to plug in, uh, which is the 12 volt DC. And actually uh, I managed to find uh, a spare adapter in the garage, um, which would replace the cigarette lighter that comes with the package. And so that's what I'm using here. And we'll plug that in. And what you'll see uh, if you look really carefully is just um, by that extension port, that little green LED came on. And that tells me that the firmware has uh, fired up and the device is ready to go. Uh, so all that remains then is to plug this into uh, the USB, uh, which is there. And uh, on the uh, screen, um, there is the focus, focus app, and we bring that up. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's a, this is a standalone uh, version. Really, I'm only just here just to test um, the, the cube itself. Uh, so I went through a little setup routine here that tells the, um, tells the uh, uh, computer which port uh, the Focus Cube is using. And uh, there are instructions on how to do that uh, in the manual. It's pretty simple to do. Uh, we're going to connect to the focuser. And there it is. Um, and all we want to do is really just test um, that, the, that the motor here is working. Now, it's a very accurate motor, so we just have to make sure that we've got um, uh, the right number of steps. And so I'm using the big steps here, if you can just see on the screen, uh, plus 250 steps that way, minus 250 steps that way. And uh, what I can feel, that's the best way to do this, what I can feel, I can feel the stepper motor uh, stepping, through those, uh, stepping through those steps there, 250 steps positive, 250 steps negative. And so uh, with that, uh, I've proven that the focus cube works, the motor's all in good function. Uh, so it's time now to modify the telescope. So back to the focus on the telescope. Um, here's the universal bracket. Uh, the universal bracket has got this piece here uh, where the motor fixes and then these various slots here, which are designed to fit um, underneath um, uh, these telescopes so that uh, the motor can fit. Now, I'm just gonna make a rough um, measurement here and just see uh, if these line up. And um, you can see there that they do. And um, I've also looked at how much we should cut the spindle off. And on this, um, I've got to cut right up to the uh, top of the knob here so that I have um, as much spindle as possible. And what's going to happen uh, basically is uh, that the focus cube, focus cube is here. It slots uh, through here. It's got some fixing screws that you then uh, screw through. And uh, then a coupler goes on the end of the shaft here. And that is what then goes onto the spindle of the telescope. And so that's what we're gonna be busy uh, making uh, in this part of the video. Uh, I'm not gonna take you through all the detail of uh, sawing the knob off. Um, that's, um, uh, that's something you can um, look at for yourself how that happens with a hacksaw or similar. Um, but uh, what we'll do now is uh, take this part of the telescope off and get it ready for uh, taking this, uh, this thumb screw uh, off here. So with a little Phillips screwdriver, uh, we'll take each one of these uh, bolts off. Uh, these are those little M4 uh, 10 millimeter bolts. Just take it off. You can see the focus are there beginning to loosen up. It'll probably fall off for me in a minute. Let's have a look. Screw number three. And we won't need these screws afterwards. Uh, we've got some much nicer um, hex bolts which we're going to use. Um, they have to be slightly longer of course and uh, because of the thickness of the bracket and the thickness of the, uh, the thickness of the bracket and the thickness of the washer we're going to use, um, we're going to need some longer ones anyway. So here, here we are, here's the uh, rack and pinion mechanism there. You can see some old lithium grease uh, which we're going to replace as we do this so it's nice and clean and uh, these, this, this brass uh, tensioner here uh, which we have to put in place uh, when we reassemble. So these bits we need, and we just don't need uh, the, these screws. These, 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 these will go. Okay, so uh, back from the garage, a couple of surprises. Uh, the first one is when I gave the uh, focus a uh, spindle that a really good uh, tug. Uh, turns out it wasn't glued. It was uh, very tightly uh, threaded into this, which was good news. Didn't have to saw my way through that um, and the spindle uh, turned out to be slightly over uh, seven millimeters so I've used the eight millimeter 
um, coupling on the on the uh, focus cube. So here we are. Um, I've screwed the motor loosely into the universal bracket uh, with the uh, bolts that were provided, and I've attached uh, the um, the coupler on, onto the spindle here. And you can see by my fingers. Uh, the other thing I did while I was here was I put new lithium grease uh, onto the focuser um, uh, rack and pinion, and I've put the brass uh, tensioner in, into position now. So. Uh, all that remains now is to um, start the reassembly. So here's the telescope with the focus cube uh, fully assembled on it now, apart from the, the wiring. Um, I learned a few lessons on the way, uh, which uh, I'm going to tell you about so that you don't have to learn them yourself. Uh, the, the first one uh, is that uh, you can see here four uh, securing bolts. Now, I thought I wasn't going to have to cut the spindle, when I assembled the focus cube on the telescope without cutting the spindle, the spindle was too long. Uh, the universal bracket here would only fit with uh, two screws and that resulted in quite a lot of flex on the bracket uh, when uh, the focuser was being used. So uh, the spindle itself is made of a pretty hard steel. Uh, so a friend had to grind off about 10 millimeters of the, of the spindle. Uh, it only took a minute or so to take it off. Uh, and at that point the fit was good. Uh, with, because now we can have these four, uh, these four fixing screws here. So the next lesson I learned was uh, when you tighten this um, plate that secures the spindle to the body of the telescope down too far, uh, there was too much pressure on the spindle and uh, so I took it apart again. Uh, and I'm only using one of the brass uh, tensioners, which you can just about see. Here and the second thing, you can see those little spacer washers. Uh, they're one millimeter uh, metric washers. Uh, the idea of them is to uh, put a bit of a shim uh, in between the body of the telescope and the bracket. And uh, they were quite fiddly to put in. Um, and uh, the little trick I found there was super glue them in place uh, so that they're held temporarily while you then thread the bolts uh, through the universal bracket, through the uh, retainer plate. Uh, on, on, the, on the telescope there and then tighten it all up. And so that's now holding uh, well. The final modification I made is to include these two M3 uh, 20 millimeter uh, bolts uh, skewed by nuts either side of the bracket. These uh, remove any kind of flexing that might uh, exist between the, uh, the, the bracket and the length of the uh, telescope. And so these can be adjusted to suit. Um, and then once they're there, uh, the bracket is all in place. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, lots of lessons learned, certainly by myself here, and hope they're useful to you. Uh, clear skies, everybody.